So in this one, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to the materials in Blender. We'll unwrap a cube and just add in some texture maps. So let's get started. So I've just started a new blend file for this example. So file, new, reload startup file. So the first thing I want to do is come over to my browser and you can get a copy of GIMP at GIMP.org. It's a free image manipulation program. It's very useful when you're working with a lot of images all the time. Okay, so you can download that. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. The next tab here I have, it's called Insane Bump. It's a plugin for, it's a plugin for GIMP. You can do a search for it and it's at the GIMP.org registry. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. The next one then is just textures. So a quick search in Google will bring you up stone textures if I come into images. So this is your typical stone texture. So if you downloaded one of these, for example, you could open up GIMP and I have one over here that I'm just going to drag in. And if you want to create your maps from this, so with the insane bump add-on enabled, you come up to filters, map and click insane. Okay, I'm just going to leave the default settings. You can read up on those if you want to. So what it's doing at the moment is it's creating all these maps. So it's going to give you a color map. It's going to give you a normal map, which is quite useful. It's going to give you a height map, a displacement map that can be used along with your image. Okay, to give you a better looking material. Another program that I use is one that's shipped with Substance Painter, Bitmap 2 Material. And similar to the add-on in GIMP, it will create maps for you. So if you drag your image texture in here, you can set it to main. It's going to drag that out of the way. You can set your image size here. So we we'll set it to a thousand by a thousand. I go to export. You can browse where you want this. Just going to select a folder on desktop. These are the maps it's going to create. You can set your image format here. So maybe create TIFFs and click export. Okay, and close those. So let's take a look inside in Blender. So what I wanted to do was maybe unwrap this cube and add that material to it. So if I, with the cube selected, I'm just going to press delete and delete that. I'm going to press shift A and add a cube. If I come over here to the initial options, I can check generate UVs. So now if I tab into edit mode, I can drag this up here and switch it to a UV image editor. You can see we have an unwrapped cube there. Okay, so what if you wanted to unwrap your own cube? So I'm just going to drag this one back over here. So I'm going to press Shift A, add a cube. I'm going to uncheck Generate UVs, delete that cube, and just add back another one. Okay, so we don't have a unwrapped cube. So what I'm going to do is tab into Edit Mode. I'm going to switch to Edge Selection, and I'm going to add some seams to this so we can get the same effect or an unwrapped cube, basically. So I'm going to add edges to where I would cut this with the scissors if I wanted to lay it out flat on the ground. So I'm going to start here, come around, come around here, here and here. Okay, so basically the least amount of cuts to lay this out flat. So with these guys selected, I'm going to press Control E, mark seam. I'm going to press A once or twice, press U and unwrap. Now down here, slightly tilted, so you can just press R, rotate it around. Press G and just drag this up. So I'm going to come back to object mode and just come over to the outliner here. Select my lamp. I'm actually going to come up up here and just switch this to cycles so I can use nodes. And I'm just going to increase this to 1000. So that's the, the strength for the lamp. Okay, so if we come back around here. I'm going to press Control B just to draw a border selection around here so we can view this rendered. If I select my cube, I can come over to the material tab, click new. I'm just going to come down here and switch this to a node editor. I need to come down here and switch this to material and just zoom in here. So we begin with a diffuse material that I'm not going to use. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a shader. It's going to be a principal BSDF or Blender's PBR shader. Now with the node wrangler add-on enabled, I can just select my principal BSDF, press control shift T. I can come to the folder where I saved out my maps from the substance add-on, which is this program here. I can select them all, maybe deselect the, the original image and just click principled texture setup. So I can give this cube a quick render. Okay, and it's brought in the maps and basically plugged them in for me. So we have our color map with this node set to color and you'll notice the rest of them are set to non-color data. Okay, and that's important when you're adding your images. So let's just take a look at the list actually. 
So the first one is the base color, plugged into the base color here. The next one in it is the metallic, non-color data. The next one down is the specular. So we'll come on down a little bit more. The next one is the roughness map. The next one down is the bump. So the bump is going into bump node, coming up into the normal. And then finally down here is the displacement, which is running through the offset, a strength multiplier, and into the displacement. So that's the node setup. Now normally you might use your normal map from here and you might not actually use the displacement map. So you could get rid of the displacement map and just switch this out to be the normal map and open that and just switch this node then. So I'm gonna delete the bump, shift A, add in your vector and your normal map. So you can plug in the color here and plug in the normal to the normal. And you could actually get rid of the displacement. Depends on what you're doing and what kind of results you want to get. But that's the basic setup anyway for your PBR shader. And obviously you have a mapping node and a texture coordinate node that's set to UVs. So let's take a look at adding in the GIMP maps. So I'm just going to delete the displacement and switch out this one here, which is my normal map. So I can click open. I'm going to come to the folder I've saved these into and it's going to be underscore n let's double click that so it doesn't give you a roughness map so i'm just going to delete that specular map i can swap out so it's the underscore s it doesn't give us a metallic so i'm just going to delete that and it gives us a color map stone one underscore d for diffuse and open okay and you can see it's a little bit different than the other one we don't have as many maps and obviously the detail isn't as good but there are two methods of adding textures and creating textures, either in GIMP or in the Bitmap 2 material. Now, there are websites that you can get these maps on, so the likes of textures.com or polygon.com. Some of them are free, some of them you have to pay for, but if you have image textures, you have the option to create your own textures. Okay, and that's it for the quick introduction to material. I'd recommend creating a couple of maps and going through this process a few times because you're going to be doing it quite a bit coming up in the next few lectures. But otherwise, that's going to do it for this one.